Hey, it's Tom and Mike from Take Time to Travel. Le Marais is our favorite neighborhood in Paris. It's one of the city's most vibrant districts, filled with so many things to see and do. From shopping and relaxing in the picturesque Place des Vosges, to the buzzing nightlife, delicious cuisine, and lots of inviting patios. There are so many reasons to love Le Marais. It's also the neighborhood where we choose to stay when we visit Paris. And it's where we've spent the most time exploring, as well as spent the most time eating in tasty restaurants. So today, we're going to show you what there is to do, what there is to eat, and why we like Le Marais so much. We'll start at our beautiful Parisian Airbnb, which was tastefully designed and had lots of big windows to enjoy the gorgeous scenery from the spacious living room, and also from the bedroom, which had delightful views overlooking the charming street Rue des Rosiers. Rue des Rosiers is a picturesque Parisian street lined with these pretty flower-covered trees. It's a popular street to stroll along and browse through the many fashionable boutiques, retailers, clothing stores, as well as inviting cafes and restaurants, selling everything from bubble tea to sushi, and falafel and shawarma, like these places here. The green one on the right had a big line every time we passed by. Just a short walk, a little bit further down Rue des Rosiers, you'll find this enticing area lined on both sides with cute little patios serving all kinds of different cuisine. Love all the hanging plants at this place here. And this place too. It's completely covered in vines. But let's keep going to the end of Rue des Rosiers and onto Rue Vieille du Temple to try a tasty French bistro. It's called Le Col Maçon. Let's head inside and check it out. The restaurant's snug interior features raw stone walls, as well as these cool hand-hewn wooden beams. To drink, I started with a mojito, and Tom got one too. For the appetizer, we both shared the baked phyllo-wrapped goat cheese with honey and candied tomatoes, as well as the escargot and parsley and garlic sauce. Both the baked goat cheese and the escargot were delicious. And the unique thing was, even the shells on the escargot were edible. After we finished our appetizers, we saw these horses pulling a carriage down the narrow street followed closely behind by another horse-drawn carriage clip-clopping along. We think it was for a movie or something. After that, it was time for the main course. I had the leg of rabbit stuffed with oyster mushrooms and bacon, served with sweet potato mash. And Tom got the duck magre with cumin and honey sauce. Both dishes were delicious, but our favorite was the leg of rabbit, which was exceptional. Then, since it was Tom's birthday, they brought over a couple of complimentary liqueurs. Overall, we really enjoyed my birthday dinner at Le Col Maçon, but there's more to see. So let's head over to Rue de Temple to see what else there is to do in the Marais neighborhood. This section of Rue de Temple is a lovely walking street lined with lots of restaurants, patios, and you'll also find the landmark BHV Marais in this gorgeous building here. A staple at the corner of Rue de Temple and Rue de Rivoli, this popular department store has been in business for over 160 years. Just across the road from Le BHV Marais, you'll find the gorgeous Hotel de Ville or City Hall, the construction of which began in 1535. What a spectacular building and a great spot for a picture. Further along Rue de Rivoli, you'll find lots more places to shop in the many clothing stores and boutiques lining the beautiful wide avenue. And just like the rest of Le Marais, you'll also find lots of attractive restaurants, sidewalk cafes, and of course, many churches too. Like this one called the Church of St. Paul St. Louis, which dates all the way back to the 17th century. The front doors were open, so we walked inside to check it out. What an incredible building! But let's keep going and find some more food. 
Let's head around the corner to Tom's favorite restaurant in Le Marais, called Chez Mademoiselle. Inside this cozy French bistro, there's a small bar area. Then in the dining room, there's an exposed brick wall, some funky wallpaper, as well as this cool old mechanical lift with a stone wall behind it. We sat down and had a look at their French-only menu. It's short, concise, and features only quality seasonal ingredients. To drink? I had one of their Fisher beers. And Tom decided to get a glass of rum and coke with a slice of lemon. Then, for the appetizer, we shared the burrata and green asparagus, which tasted incredible. For our mains, I decided to get the beef tenderloin extra with a tasty pepper sauce, as well as a small side of greens and a huge bowl of creamy mashed potatoes. Tom chose the grilled tuna with sauce vierge, accompanied by leafy greens and creamy mashed potatoes. For dessert, we shared the delectable cheesecake with red fruits, which came with a huge pot of freshly whipped cream. This was literally the best dessert we had on our entire trip. We would definitely go back to Chez Mademoiselle just for the cheesecake and whipped cream. And at the end of our meal, we got a free shot of lemon cello. What a great way to finish! Overall, we had an exceptional meal at Chez Mademoiselle, but there's more tasty food in Le Marais, which we're going to try after we have a quick look at this wonderful green vine covered wall. Very pretty. Just a short walk away, on another quiet side street, you'll find this lovely patio for Au Bourguignon de Marais. Let's go give it a try. To start, I ordered a mojito, and Tom decided to get a rum and coke. Then, for the appetizer, we shared six large burgundy escargot, as well as a basket of baguette. For the main course, I got the salmon back with rice and curry sauce, and Tom chose the colorful salmon poke bowl with avocado, red onions, pomegranate, edamame, and peppers on a bed of rice and greens. All of our food was delicious, and overall, we loved our meal at Au Bourguignon du Marais. Another nearby tasty restaurant is Van des Pyrenees. Let's head into the classic French bistro, which has been operating since 1905, and see what makes it so special. After we sat down at our table, we had a look over the menu to decide what to order. To start, we each had a bottle of their Appy Cider, which hit the spot nicely. For the appetizer, we shared the Sea Bream Tatar with pomegranate and mango vinaigrette. Then, for my main course, I chose the essential croque monsieur with ham and a side salad. And Tom had the homemade gnocchi with creamy burrata and balsamic oil. Both the croque monsieur and the homemade gnocchi were tasty. And we had a great meal at Vin de Perigny. If you're a wine drinker, there's also La Cave des Pyrénées across the street, which has an extensive wine selection. And just a few minutes walk away, you'll find the oldest planned square in Paris, called Place des Vosges. This lovely square was built by King Henry IV in 1612, and is now a scenic park to relax in and enjoy the beautiful Parisian summer weather. Love the water fountains on each of the four corners. The spectacular Place des Vosges is lined with manicured trees and gorgeous red brick buildings, some of which have luxury accommodations available like the 5-star Le Pavillon de la Reine Hotel. What a beautiful place for a stay in Paris. Even though the square is more than 400 years old, it still looks remarkable. In the center, you'll find this nice statue of King Louis XIII, the original of which was torn down during the French Revolution and was replaced in the 19th century. Surrounding the elegant Place des Vosges, you'll find lots of cute cafes, and you'll even find some people selling artwork underneath the impressive stone and brick arches. Another beautiful centuries-old building in Le Marais is Hotel de Sebise, which was the private home for the Prince and Princess de Sebise, and now houses the National Archives Museum. We didn't take one of the guided tours of the archives, but the outside of the building was impressive to look at nevertheless. But let's keep going. There's more to see, do, and eat in Le Marais. 
In addition to all of the beautiful old Parisian streets and buildings, there's the high-tech, postmodern-looking Pompidou Center building. It houses Europe's largest museum for modern art, as well as a vast public library. And of course, one of our favorite parts of Le Marais are all of the bustling sidewalk cafes. There are so many inviting patios to choose from. One of the tasty places that we tried was Creperie Crepologue, where we started our meal with a bottle of their sore cider, served with this cute little cup. Next, I ordered the crepoir with pear, melted mozzarella, blue cheese, walnuts, and honey. And Tom ordered the dessert crepe called Crepo Vanille with vanilla ice cream, caramel, salted butter, and roasted almonds. Both of our crepes were delicious, but continuing on, if you're looking Looking for some nightlife, Le Marais has lots to offer. On Rue des Archives, you'll find lots of the neighborhood's vibrant gay bars, cafes, and restaurants. We decided to try the alluring patio of Les Marronniers and ordered a couple of pina coladas, which were just okay. Le Marais is a wonderful neighborhood with picturesque streets filled with beautiful buildings where you can shop as well as peaceful squares like Place des Vosges, where you can relax, or you can even go check out a museum, spend some time with friends on one of the many patios, and of course, you can find lots of delicious food. As always, we really enjoyed making today's video, and we hope you enjoyed watching it too. If you did, we'd really appreciate it if you'd like, subscribe, and hit the bell for notifications on our future videos. It really helps with the YouTube algorithm and helps our channel to grow. And remember, take time to travel. Catch you on the next one.